Hello everyone, it's Deli here and welcome to our first ever build, speed build in The Sims 4 Island Living. Now I know what you're thinking, or well, some of you guys who've been on this channel for a while who like to keep updated with every single video, you're thinking, Deli, you've already done a speed build, I saw it the other week. Well, that build doesn't count because I was overseas testing out the pack and I only had 25 minutes to do it. So I, I just wanted to get a build out so I could show you guys some something from build and buy mode but this is the first time that we're actually sitting down we have no time restraints i was able to indulge completely and fully into this island living pack and i've got to say i enjoyed every single moment of it because whilst this pack does have uh well i think it lacks a lot in gameplay i i would say that i'm i've got a lot of criticism actually in terms of how much gameplay is available in this pack Whilst that might not be the best in my own personal opinion, I've got to say they've absolutely nailed build and buy mode and the aesthetics of this pack. This pack is so beautiful. All of the items are just stunning. Like I, I've got to say it might even be the strongest pack for build and buy. It's just beautiful. I love it so much. And I've got to say the new uh, ability to build over water on stilted uh, platforms or foundations is so much fun to use and it was so it was so lovely to be able to experiment with it so I really hope that you guys enjoy this build and for those of you guys who do have the Sims 4 Island Living who are lucky to have that game uh, you're welcome to download this and obviously it's utilizing as many of those items from the Sims 4 Island Living as I possibly can and this build, which I haven't already said to you guys, will probably be in the title. It is like a semi-mansion. It's a big house. It's like a wealthy island living mansion. Is this a mansion? Like, what What makes up a mansion? I do always wonder this. I mean, how many rooms does a mansion need to have? This has six bathrooms and four bedrooms. I feel like this could constitute as a mansion, but it's not like your traditional mansion where it's like, I've got a bowling alley and I've got 10 bedrooms and I've got, I don't know, a place where I store my cupcake machine. <laughs> uh, it's not kind of that mansion. It's a tasteful mansion, but I think it's pretty bomb.com and it's definitely kind of my own personal style with a little bit more of an island influence, obviously, because this pack is quite... It's got a lot, of, a lot of Polynesian influence, so it's a little bit more heading that way. But in terms of like the lighter timber tones, the modern look and feel of it, uh, that's definitely my personal taste. So if you're new to the channel, this is the kind of house that I would potentially live in. Probably maybe a little bit big for my liking. I would not like to live in a mansion. Would you guys live in a mansion? Would you like that? I just feel so bad for the environment, to be honest. Like all of the power you would use and just the fact that you're living in this crazy massive home and then there's people who live in like tiny boxes or don't have homes. I would feel really bad, I think. I don't I don't think I could do it. I could definitely live in like a spacious, really lovely home, but not a mansion. I just, not for me. So I'm curious, would you guys be like, hell yeah, I'd live in a mansion. You know, if I work for it and I get my mansion, I'll enjoy my mansion. I think that's totally fine. The other thing is uh, on these lots with the water that you can build over, these lots do not allow you to build basements. So there was one stage when I actually wanted to do like an underground cinema and we were unable to because uh, obviously because you're not allowed to do that on these lots. I understand it. I don't think I'm annoyed about it at all. Like to be honest, um, I don't use basements that often in many builds unless it's like part of the theme of the build to have like a hidden basement or something like that. I just, I think in Australia, basements aren't really, really common where I live in Melbourne. It's just not really a common part of architecture. Whereas in other places, basements are very common. So I'm okay with us not having basements on these lots. Uh, there's already plenty of building for me to do. So I'm cool with that. But the only thing is you can't actually put a pool in. Uh, I would have loved to be able to have a pool over the water, but to get around that, I just made like a pool in the foundation, just like this. I mean, that would be pretty awesome because you can just go swimming straight bam in the ocean. It's not too shabby at all. And these are the new ladders, which you can use to get in and out of the ocean. We've got some new jet skis. We're popping those down in a couple of different colors. And I think also some of you guys may be thinking, okay, like, 
I get it, you're building a house, but why are you doing like half furnishing? <laughs> the reason why I'm placing random furniture as I go is because sometimes when I'm building, I'll focus more on the interior space of the home as opposed to the exterior. I think I kind of build in two different ways. One way is I want to make the outside of the home look great. So I'll just kind of do the outside and then I'll like I make the shell of the build and then I'll go in and figure out the floor plan because my focus was the exterior. However, sometimes I'm more focused on the interior and I want it to be really spacious. I want everything to be furnished kind of perfectly and everything to have a home. I don't wanna work with the interior space that I've left myself. So to do that, I will actually furnish as I go. And I find that this is a really, really effective way to build. I, I don't know how many people build like this. Let me know in the comments down below. But I feel like if you're kind of new to building, and maybe you've been doing the exterior thing for a while and, and you're not really happy with your builds, why don't you why don't you try doing this? And we're gonna go back and change the couches and change all of the items I've laid down. I'm just doing that to space it out a little bit. And also this build is part of my new Let's Play. We are doing a Let's Play of Island Living and I needed to have this house for a second household. We are going to pop in and out of now and then. And that family, they are very, very wealthy. Clearly they live in this massive home and they, their story is basically that they are a wealthy family whose dad and mom run maybe a construction company or a, a company that does a lot of developments. And their aim is to develop this island and make it really commercial and bustling, like the new holiday destination with high rise hotels and all of that. They they dream and have a vision of building it up. This is going to be a part of our Let's Play because the main family we're playing, their dad, Rongo, is really into, you know, traditional island lifestyle. They live in huts off the grid. They don't believe in, you know, lots of consumption and modern day life with electricity and plumbing. They just don't think that is the way of the island of Sulani. So there's going to be a little bit of trouble there if the kids start making friends with each other and the parents like, we don't like, you know, kind of a Romeo and Juliet, potentially that kind of a storyline. So that's just to give a bit of a background for what this build is about. So basically it's, it's a showy build. It's kind of meant to look a little bit like a display home. Like this family, they're so money driven. And at the same time, they also probably have lived in so many different homes and so many developments that they just get an interior designer to make it look perfect and they're good to go. They don't have lots of knickknacks and things passed down or family heirlooms. They're like, let's just get everything brand new and make this house look amazing. So there is meant to be a little bit of a lack of personality in this home. It is a little too perfect in some ways, like the color scheme is too perfect, but then I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> I also have to say the floor tiles are beautiful that look down into the ocean below. They are really, really cool uh, that we've put in some of the corridors. I'm just adding a butler's room uh, to the left there. This is also like a bar area next to our dining area. The floor plan works really, really well. I think this house will be quite good for gameplay um, because your Sims can easily get around or they should be able to. The kitchen joins up to the dining area with which joins up to the bar. The kitchen also goes straight outside to the barbecue area. It all flows really, really nicely. And the butler's room is somewhat pretty, pretty much next to the kitchen. It's very close to the kitchen. So that is good. And yeah, I wanted to put some boats on the water, have the jet skis. They've got like everything they could possibly want here. So there's definitely going to be a lot of fun in this household. And we're also going to build a cinema upstairs, which is kind of cool. And to tell you guys a little bit about the kids, uh, we have Jane, who is the daughter, and she, I'm trying to remember her personality because we haven't actually gone into gameplay with them yet. She's kind of like, the reason why I gave her the name Jane is because she's a little bit of a plain Jane, you know? If your name's Jane, don't be offended. It's just like the saying of a plain Jane doesn't mean that Janes are boring. I just thought I'd kind of go with that idea that she's a bit of a girl next door. She's a bit kind of perfect looking on the outside and maybe people would be quick to judge. Oh, she's just pretty. She doesn't really have that much of a personality. She's just kind of perfect. You know, everyone knows that kind of person. Some of you guys might be that person where people just kind of judge you and think, oh, they're just perfect and 
and they don't really have any depth. But the thing is, she's going to have a lot of depth and she's she is a nice person. So I'm kind of excited to play her out as a sim because uh, she's like a nice sim and she's going to, I guess, not be so perfect. She is someone with a lot of depth beneath the exterior of her character, like that perfect exterior. And I think it'll be interesting as we get into the storyline a little bit more. We've just got to be patient with the Let's Play because in terms of storytelling, I'm also trying to explore the pack as much as possible. So we are doing a few laborious tasks like doing the conservation career, which it does take time. You're not going to be rewarded straight away. Uh, we are exploring some of the new options. So that does take a little bit away from our storytelling because it just takes a little bit longer to get through all of those new discoveries. Whereas when we're doing a let's play that's purely story driven, that's not a new pack, we'll just, you know, dive into it and start the storytelling and we don't need to explore anything. Does that make sense? Some of you guys watching this are probably like, I don't watch your LP, so I just care about the build. Why do you keep talking about this? Uh, I just am really passionate about The Sims. I just, I love it so much. Even a pack like this that I have criticisms about, even if I might say that I don't like things, I still love this game so much and it's it's like my life. <laughs> oh my gosh, why did we suddenly just get so deep and emotional about a freaking game that's meant to be light and happy? Good grief, Dally. Anyway, moving back to the build, I think we need to turn it down a notch. So <laughs> this is the exterior of the build. I really, really like it. I actually really liked it with the white wallpaper. However, I do see comments a lot of the time from you guys saying you always use white, like stop using so many plain white walls. <laughs> so in in honor of you guys and that, that constant feedback that I get, I actually decided to add a little bit of color to the exterior and we're going to be changing the white exterior to a blue color. And it looks really nice. I just personally prefer the white. So if you download it, you can change it to white if you want to, uh, if you prefer the look of it now. The other thing is the front of this house uh, is before I put the cinema in. So you guys may like to revert it back to the facade that's currently here when we go back to the front of it, because uh, you might not, you might prefer the look of it. I think it actually looks nicer from the exterior with the, uh, without the cinema. Like, I think it looks really nice now. And then when you add the cinema at the front, it starts looking a little top heavy and clunky, but then you have a cinema room. So, you know, it's not so bad. Anyway, jumping into the furnishing, we're going to have some screenshots at the end, so you will see the facade soon, uh, or as I like to say, the facade, because <laughs> facade looks like facade, and I knew a professor at university who used to call it a facade, and he was a design professor, so that was awkward. Anyway, this is the lounge room. Again, we decided to go with kind of arguably a little bit of a boring color palette because it's like you got your green, you got your brown, you got your white, everything's very perfect. It's kind of display home-esque, but I think it works for this family and I think it's still nice. I also used this like C round table that I have never used. <laughs> I was so sad they made that table with a fish tank in it because I was like, how many people are going to use a fish tank in their coffee table? Like how many characters? I just wish it was glass as well. Uh, but you know what? I think it's cool in this build. Like it goes with the ocean theme. So finally we're using it, which is exciting. Love this big mirror at the end of those glass floor tiles. Those floor tiles are so fantastic. And they're going to be so great for so many like uh, skyscrapers. Well, not skyscrapers, skylights. You know, I think they're going to be really good for that. I think Builders is going to have a lot of fun with them. The other thing I'd like to say is that if you have a foundation that isn't stilted, those look those floor tiles look a lot nicer. Whereas if you are using the stilts, you will see the stilts up against the glass. So it doesn't look quite as flawless. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I used proper solid foundation. And also I did find with this build that wherever we used stilted foundation, there was a little bit of a glitch. Uh, it did become a little janky. It kind of, when you rotated the camera, I'm not sure if we captured any of it during this filming, but you'd rotate the camera and 
it kind of looked like you were looking through the floor to Minecraft or something. Like it was just this massive cube going into the infinity and beyond. <laughs> it was like kind of weird. So I don't know why it's so janky. I think it's janky is my new favorite word, by the way. I use the word janky so much at the moment. Is janky even a word? I don't even know where it came from. Love these vases too. Those vases are so beautiful. Oh, I love them so much. And I thought, I was looking at this wall and I'm like, oh, I don't know if these, like, if these paintings are working. Is it really what we want in here? A few of you guys on the stream were like, I don't like that painting. So I decided to change it up a little bit and we will actually go onto the gallery. And if you go to rooms, because you can download rooms off the gallery, you can search for paintings. And what players have actually done is they've gotten their Sims to paint I don't know how they actually do it, to be honest. I think they get their Sims to paint custom content paintings in the game somehow. I don't know. They like get their Sim to paint pictures and then you'll see it in a second. And then the pictures are then not custom content because you Sim painted them and then you just save them and then people can download them. So there's all of these paintings. They're not custom content, but uh, clearly they're not like Max's paintings. So I decided to download this tropical painting option. You can see the creator just then if you pause the video. And so I just thought, you know what? This looks really cool. Like it goes with the theme. It doesn't look, I don't really like the paintings that look alpha or out of place to the aesthetic of The Sims, but I feel like these ones look kind of, they go enough with The Sims. Like it's Max's match enough for me. And if you don't know what Max's match means, basically Max's is the studio that makes The Sims 4. So you're matching the Max's aesthetic. Uh, that is what that term means, because I know some of you guys get a little bit confused. So yeah, this is uh, basically what we're doing. We've got some new stools. That bar is from Base Game, I believe. And uh, then there's a nice little drink station. I can't remember what that drink station's from, but it's like a tray that you can get your Sims to serve up. Some bubbly drinks, which is quite nice. We're going to change these frames to white because I think that looks quite beautiful on a white wall. It's a little bit more subtle than the black frame. And then, yeah, it's all coming together. I think it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. I hope you guys like this. I, I was proud. You know, sometimes I do builds and I post them and I just am like, oh, I don't know if this is a very good build. I don't know if you guys are going to like it. And you guys really like it. And then sometimes I post builds that I'm really proud of. And I was about to say you guys don't like it, but I don't think that's ever happened. You guys are generally really, really supportive, which is really, really cool. Uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. You've never actually been like, I don't. You guys give criticism for sure, but usually it's very constructive. I do often say that you guys collectively are one of the most awesome audiences I've seen on YouTube because we all know the internet can get pretty scary. <laughs> you know, it gets pretty toxic. Uh, but I feel like the community we have on this channel and I guess across a lot of Sims channels, genuinely, I feel like we're pretty chill people. So that's nice. I think we got a good thing going on here. And then I read these comments tomorrow and you guys are going off about something like, oh my God, Deli, I can't believe you did this. And then I'll be like, no. And then that will be sad. Hopefully I didn't jinx our good you know, thing we've got going on here. This area is an office area. And I happen to really, really love the color of these desks because they remind me of the color of the desks in a film one of my favorite films, The Devil Wears Prada, in the Runway magazine. Is it Runway? Yeah, Runway, uh, where they work. And Anne Hathaway, she has this desk that's that color. And I love them. I just think they looked really cool in the film. And so I'm like, I love using these. <laughs> We've also got all of the new amazing door swatches that were updated in the update before Island Living came out. So that was a free update. So if you have The Sims 4, you don't have this expansion. You will have those new doors. Super exciting. And they basically gave us 350. 350 new swatches for doors. It was one of the happiest moments of my life to date. <laughs> 
And you guys can watch a video uh, that I did with my friend James, who also has a Sims channel, The Sims Supply. We did a video where it was, we waited five years for this. And that is the video where we look at these door swatches and we absolutely lost our marbles in that. Like only the Sims players would get excited about new door colors. <laughs> I swear it's just, it's a Sims thing. It's, you know, it, it meant a lot. All I wanted and all I asked for was a plain white and plain black modern door. And you know what they did? They gave us that plus 300 and... 48 more. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, so yeah, this is the kitchen. It's looking pretty, 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 pretty nice. Did I, I feel like I've messed up some of this. Did we already watch this? Did I already place this in? Oh my gosh. No, I don't know. I, I feel like I've already watched this footage. I don't think we have. If we're watching it again, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do not know how to edit videos after five years on YouTube. Uh, this is interesting because we had a little mishap with the counters. Speaking of criticism, um, this, this is one of those small things that happen that irritate you in life and you know you shouldn't focus on it because it's such a small thing and, and you should really get over it. But oh man, it frustrates me because they put counters in the game and every counter is meant to, every counter design is also meant to have a kitchen island counter style. Uh, available as well, but they didn't add the kitchen island. So I've made an island out of the regular counters, which means we can't actually put stools at the counter. Uh, so they, the reason why this was frustrating is because they made the same mistake with Jungle Adventure Pack, where they forgot the island counters in that as well. And they did patch it in at a later date. And apparently they're going to patch in the missing island counters for this pack too. But I don't understand how the same mistakes made twice when quality testing the pack. And we also don't have a lot of counters. So it was kind of like, no, not again. <laughs> uh, but, you know, as I said, it's not really a massive thing. It's just like one of those little irritating things. It's kind of like when people have the toilet paper up the wrong way, whether people like it over or under. <sighs> It, it gets frustrating. I like it over now. I used to like it under and now I like it over because I realized in hotels they go over. Wait, no, now I'm confused. Have I crossed over to the dark side? No, I like it under. I like it under, okay. Uh, don't take that out of context. Yeah, I like them going under and it irritates me when they go over. Yeah, it's the little things in life that get you. Really shouldn't sweat it. This is a nice little end table here with that beautiful big circular mirror. I think that mirror came from the Get Famous pack, but I just love this floor plan. It just works so nicely. So fancy. And this is our butler's room that I was telling you guys about before. Very nice. Very, well, it's actually not that nice, but it's pretty nice for a butler's room. Like it's a little small is what I mean by it's not that nice. But then again, this is bigger than my room growing up anyway. So <laughs> I would have, it, it's nice. Let's let's decide that it's nice. It's cool. So yeah, but they're going to have a butler because they're loaded. They, they're going to have the extra help. They're going to have the butler. They're going to have the maid. They're going to have the gardener for their non-existent garden at this stage. And then our other family, meanwhile, they're living in their little huts that are quite traditional and love that for them. I think that I'm pretty sure that I uploaded the ha the hot houses to the gallery. I did film them for a speed build. I could actually post that speed build like right after this one, but I'm not sure if that's like way too many videos. Maybe not. I'm not sure if I should post it or not because it's kind of old news because it's already in the L Let's Play and it was such a basic build. I'm not sure if you guys really want to watch it. Let me know in the comments down below. All right, moving on to the master bedroom. Sorry, I swallowed uh, just right in front of the microphone, which I know peeves a lot of people off. Um, but this is the beautiful master bedroom. When we were doing this on live stream, a lot of you guys said that this was actually your favorite room when I was asking who, like which room you liked best. Actually, my sister joined me on the live stream and she asked you guys. 
But I think this room is really pretty because I always do the sand cream colored blinds and we actually did the blue blinds in this build. So it is quite a strict color scheme of blue, brown and whites. But it works really nicely. It's kind of like if you're going to a nice hotel room, everything's super, super in line, super chill. And then we've got that bright pop of color in the yellow chair, which is yellow is complimentary to blue, right? So that, that works. And that chair is from Get Famous, I believe. Get Famous was a great pack, actually. I think I'd recommend Get Famous. Get Famous is really fun. I recommend Island Living if you're into, you know, the whole beach world. If you enjoy kind of making your own storylines in The Sims, you don't really need to be supported by a whole heap of gameplay in a pack, I suppose. So you can enjoy the world. You can enjoy all of the new build and buy items and the clothes and the hairs and the, the smaller gameplay options that you have, because there is a lot just in general. But if you're more of a strategic player and you want to achieve things, you may want to go for a pack like Get Famous where there's a more intense career that you have to kind of build up in the fame system and more goals for your gameplay. This one's a lot more chill in that department. So yeah, that, that's kind of cool. Love these chairs too. Ugh, all of these items are just, they're just so good. They're so good. I just love them. And we're going to change those curtains soon. A lot of people in chat were like, I don't like the curtains, change them. So I changed them. And then when I changed them, a lot of you were like, no, I loved those curtains. So if you have those curtains, that's what they look like if you want to change it back to those ones. But I did go ahead and change that in a little while. So yeah, you got a little glimpse at the front of the house. I think I'm just giving a tour right now of the house, just having a look around to see what's working, what's not. And I thought this lounge room in the master bedroom was kind of cool. I feel like if you had the money to have a lounge room in your bedroom, it'd be quite nice. You could sit down after you put the kids to bed with a wine privately in front of your fire, just chill with your hobby or your babe, or your baby, and you just chill and and in your own private area of the house. How nice. How nice is that? Uh, any of you parents watching are probably like, oh, I wish. <laughs> and any of you kids and teens watching are probably like, why would you want that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's nice. I actually had a friend growing up. Uh, she was really, really nice. We kind of fell out of touch though, but she came from a family that were really wealthy and my family wasn't wealthy. Uh, I was like the poor kid at, at my, I was lucky to go to a private school on a scholarship. But if you guys have been in the same position of being lucky enough to go to a really good school, but it may be a private school, uh, and you're there on a scholarship, you kind of realize that a lot of people around you have heaps of money and you do not. <laughs> um, I think a lot of people are put in that situation. Anyway, so point of the matter is her family was really wealthy and her parents had this stunning area of the house that was kind of similar to this. They had their own beautiful bedroom and a beautiful lounge room with a fireplace in their wing of the house. And I remember going there and being like, wow, this is like my whole house in your bedroom. <laughs> You're sick. It was cool. They were a really nice family too. Oh, nice people. Hardworking, nice people. You know, I love how we have these chats about my life stories growing up. Do you like, do you like it? Probably not. You probably do, really don't care. So this build is almost done. I think it's, the, thank God it's almost done or else we're going to hear about my life stories for like two more years. Uh, this room is going to be the teenage daughter's room. And I kind of wish I stuck with this color theme, which was like the green bed, because then I started going for a pink color scheme because I was like, oh, I could use the pink bed. And then it turned into a whole other thing that a lot of you are not going to like. I guarantee a lot of you won't like it. Some of you who are a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more oriented towards some 
asymmetrical balance as opposed to symmetrical balance. I like it because I, I didn't mind it, but we're actually going to mix pink and watermelon. Some of you on the live stream said that this made you feel ill. I apologize, but some of you guys got the aesthetic I was going with. They were like, yes, I like it. Overall, I think this room could do with a little bit more work. I think it was a little bit unfinished. Yeah, it's just, it, we kind of go back and forth, forth from this room. Really, I just want to go back and make the room green again because it looked really nice. But the problem is the teenage boys room we're going to work on, that is like full on green. So I didn't want to have two green rooms. I kind of thought it was a little bit much. The teenage boy's room, he really wants to be famous in some way, shape, or form. So I kind of thought it would be cool if he became a YouTuber. Honestly, I don't know how much time we're going to have playing out his storyline because this family is our second family. We're going to focus more on the other family. Um, but the idea was if we did get into a lot of gameplay with him, his character... His character story would be he's grown up in this really privileged lifestyle. He lives in this enormous house. His parents have given him everything growing up. And he's got these massive dreams that he is being given what he needs to achieve them because he is so privileged. So he's got this whole YouTube setup where he has his camera, desk, he's got musical instruments, he loves like games. So he's kind of like a beach surfer dude nerd who's loaded, so he's got heaps of tech. But he's also a real kind of stereotypical teenage boy. He's, his room's going to be a little bit messy. He's going to have big black curtains that black out the sunlight and view, even though he's so freaking privileged in this house. Like, he, he has black curtains and keeps them closed most of the time, even though he looks out onto an ocean. <laughs> he's just too privileged, you know, to appreciate it. But then again, he it's not for him living this lifestyle. So he just does his own thing. So this is a computer setup from The Sims for Get Famous. You can basically become the equivalent to a YouTuber, SimsTuber. Here you can make videos, upload them. He's got a vacuum in his room because he might be a little bit of a messy boy. <laughs> what are those vacuums called? Rhombuses? A rhombus? No, a rhombus is a shape, right? I remember when I was in primary school, I used to tell everyone I was going to name my kid Rohumbus after Rhombus in maths class. I just remember that. That's what I remember about. Was it trigonometry? I don't know. I don't think we did trigonometry in primary school, but something like that when we were learning about different shapes. So yeah, Rohumbus. I think we need to do another Dream Life LP where I start fresh again and have new kids and we'll call one Rohumbus, just, you know, to give a nod to that era of my life. There is a couple of custom content items in this house, actually. I've kind of got to the point now where there's a glitch with the gallery. Whenever I upload builds to the gallery, no matter what, even if I used only base game items, it will tell me that my build is using custom content, even though I'm not. So if you guys search for my builds, you're going to have to tick the tick. That's a little stutter there. Um, you've got to tick the box that says show custom content to actually see my builds. So you always have to tick that anyway. So now I've kind of gone to the point where if there's a couple of decor items that are custom content, I just use them. So there's a mirror up against the wall that's custom content. Uh, just because I think it, it looks really nice uh, on a custom content pack I reviewed maybe a month ago. And then there's also just a couple of vases that I added that are just like good shelf pieces. Those are the two custom content items. All the rest are Maxis. All the rest are all just by The Sims. And a little bit of extra information. Whilst we were decorating this teenage boy's room, I was obviously live streaming on Twitch and we had a raid from another streamer, meaning that he and his entire stream came and raided our stream and said, hello. <laughs> so for those viewers, they were playing Fortnite and uh, the stream they were watching was called Mr. Fresh Asian. He's like a pro Fortnite player who's a friend of mine. He's also only 17. So I decided to make this room his bedroom. So if you guys 
are wondering why we spend so much time on this room and why it's so extra, part of that was to say thank you for the raid on Twitch. Uh, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense to you. And everyone wanted me to put a ball pit in there, but we're going to delete that because, yeah. Oh, there's the glitch. See that? Did you guys see that? So weird. And it only happens to Stilted Foundation. Really bizarre stuff, though. Anyway, so he's got a whole heap of green stuff because he likes pickles like me. So there's green stuff everywhere. He's got like a cute children's rug um, because I think he has one of those in real life. So yeah, that's why we spent so much time on that room. All right, jumping into the screenshots, I added the cinema off camera. I forgot to film it, but you'll see pictures of it. Sorry about that. I just realized that there was absolutely no footage for that. My bad. But here are some shots of the house. So we have this little outdoor seating area. You go into the front door room and it looks like this. There was a bit of glitching there where I couldn't place objects in most of the room. So that's why it looks a little bit bare. We have the lounge room over here with our Sim Jane just chilling out. I did not pick those shots for her. This is our dining room. We also have a glass roof to the left near our bar, which I think is beautiful. Very nice, lots of light. The butler's wing, pretty cute. I actually really like the butler's ring, wing. I said that I thought it was like eh, mediocre, but I actually really like it. A few bathrooms as well, which I typically don't really show furnishing them because I find bathrooms a little bit boring to watch. Uh, then we have the kitchen area, simple, new counters, nice though. Probably could have done with bigger windows actually because with that view, you'd want windows. <laughs> This is the glass area that looks down to the ocean below, which is a little bit creepy. We've got our outdoor area. Someone's already had a little snacky on that table. Another bar. We do have three bars in this house, including the one in the cinema room. Look at that. You've got like your nice little seating area. Our kind of ocean pool, which actually looks really cool in that picture because you can see you can swim underneath it if it was real life. Another little area you can sit on and gaze out to the ocean views. How beautiful. These are a couple of our sims from the new family in the shared office area. This is their son actually in the master bedroom chilling out near the TV. Here's the master bedroom. I think that's a nice master bedroom. I think that came together quite nicely actually. And the bathroom. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. The teenage girl's room, which, yeah, I'm not 100% happy with that. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't like that room very much. <laughs> I didn't do the best job on that. I think it should be redone. Uh, bathroom. And then are we up to the boys' room? No, we've got another bathroom. Oh, my gosh. How many bathrooms did we put in this build? That's like a big gazillion. <laughs> Here's uh, the teen boys' room. Graffiti on the walls. YouTube setup. We've got the drone. We've got a really nice uh, mirrored area and wardrobe and then ensuite. And here's the cinema upstairs just at the front of the house. Pretty awesome with a bar. That's actually a pretty sick room, I think. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, and that's a view from the top and also a floor plan if you want to recreate it on console or in your games. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world, and I can't wait to speak to you soon. Soo-soo!